Good morning. My name is Evelyn Craighead, a slave, a servant of Jesus Christ. And I would like to welcome you to the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destiny, a ministry that uncompromisingly teaches the truth of God's word. And our scripture teaching this morning comes from Psalm 136, and I will be reading it in its entirety. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him alone who does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. To him who laid the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endures forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm, for his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for his mercy endures forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, for his mercy endures forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endures forever. Sihon king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. And Og king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever. And gave their land as a heritage, for his mercy endures forever a heritage to Israel his servant, for his mercy endures forever, who remembered us in our lowly state, for his mercy endures forever, and rescued us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever, who gives food to all flesh, for his mercy endures forever. All give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. I was tempted this morning to name, make my subject, His Mercy Endures Forever, but the Holy Spirit led me to entitle this message as Praise God for Who He Is. As believers, as God's people, we are often stirred to sing about His immeasurable eternal love. And Psalm 136 is an ancient song about God's love that celebrates the Lord's mercy or his loving kindness, his unfailing love, his steadfast love, or his faithful love. And it revolves around a well-known chorus that God's people sang regularly for generations. His mercy, his love endures forever. But during the Babylonian captivity, the people stopped singing this chorus in Jerusalem. But Jeremiah prophesied that one day the people would sing it again. And this song was written in fulfillment of Jeremiah's prophecy, maybe even for the worship service in Jerusalem when the temple foundation was laid. Ezra chapter 3 verse 11 says, And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever toward Israel. Then all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. This reminded God's people, believers, of who God is by rehearsing what he had done for them throughout their history. Again and again, the Lord has proven his unfailing love, and in trying times, we all need assurance of God's love for us. 
and recalling what he has done will remind us of who he is, and we too will be able to praise him for his faithful love. This is when you need God's special love and care. This is when you praise him for who he is. He is the Lord Yahweh, Jehovah, and the psalmist called the people to give thanks to the Lord. Yahweh, Jehovah, God's personal covenant name with his people. It emphasizes his relationship with them and his faithfulness to his promise. Deuteronomy 7 verses 7 through 9 expresses the significance of this name. The Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people. For you were the least of all peoples. But because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Therefore know the Lord your God. He is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. The Lord is good. His mercy and love endures forever. And God's goodness is one of his primary characteristics. But the Lord's predominant attribute is his mercy and love. His unfailing love, his unwavering faithfulness to his people. And every verse of this song, all 26 of them, celebrates the Lord's covenant love. Amen. When Psalm 136 was sung in the temple, the Levite worship leaders would sing the first line of each verse. Then the people would join in on the refrain. The Lord is the only living and true God. The Lord is also the God of gods and the Lord of lords. But by no means do these statements suggest that the gods of the pagans were real or that God is the chief of all the gods. They are merely statements of praise, acknowledging God's supremacy, that he's the only living and true God. As Elohim, he's the only almighty, all-powerful one. As Adon, he's the master and ruler of all. Because of his unfailing love for them, God alone can do mighty wonders and miracles for his people. Yeah. And none of the imaginary gods of other nations had done anything for the people. Nothing at all. Amen. But not so with the Lord. The Lord had done amazing things for Israel. Yeah. And some of these mighty works will be highlighted as the psalm continues. And if you think about it, Again and again, God's word instructs us to be thankful for all that he has done and continues to do for us. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20 says, Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Scripture commands us to give thanks. As we express our gratitude, we need to know that we are giving thanks to the Lord, the God who offers his covenant to us through the blood of his Son. Yeah. And we can have a relationship with him if we will turn from our sin and believe in Christ Jesus. Amen. He's the God who keeps covenant forever, his covenant. The Lord promises us eternal life if we genuinely repent and believe, and he will not break his promises to Amen. us. He's the God who's good, and every good thing in our lives is a gift from God. Yeah. He's even good to us before we believe and become his mm. sons and daughters, and out of his goodness, he leads us to repentance. Amen. Isaiah 45, verses 5 through 6 says, I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me. They that may know from the rise that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none beside me i am the lord and there is no other Amen. he's the god who does great things for us and the greatest of god's works on our behalf is his giving us his son the lord offered his only begotten son as the sacrifice for our sin why because of his immeasurable love for yes. us the lord Israel's covenant-keeping God is the great creator who wisely designed and made the universe. And the Lord's people praised him for his unfailing love and everything he had done from, for them beginning with creation. By his unparalleled wisdom, he designed and made the universe. And the universe is in, 
indescribably complex and extraordinarily precise. And every detail testifies of a creator whose wisdom is beyond our comprehension. The Lord made the earth and the waters, the things that we can touch and identify with, and it describes the earth as it appears to us, a massive body of water, partly visible, partly invisible, with patches of land unfolded mm -hmm. over it. Yeah. The Lord also made the lights of outer space, the seemingly infinite expanse that's beyond our reach. Even with modern scientific advances, the heavens remain a fascinating mystery to us. Yeah. During the day, we see only the sun. At night, the moon and stars appear. And these heavenly bodies fill us with wonder, and the Lord created them all. Yeah. But why is it so vital to know that God is the creator? And the answer is that God uses his creation to reveal his existence to humanity as well as the truth that we are accountable to him. Romans chapter 1 verses 18 through 20 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Amen. If Satan can deceive people into believing a fictional theory about the universe's origin, mm. they will never move forward to accept the full revelation of scripture about God. Yeah. And the beginning of faith is looking at creation and realizing that God is the source or designer of creation. Yes. Once you believe this fact, God's Spirit can lead you to faith in what Scripture tells us about God. Mm -hmm. God is the great Creator who loves us so much that He sacrificed His only Son yes. so that we might be saved. And yet in many cultures today, the truth about God creating the universe is severely ridiculed. Mm. Isaiah 45 verse 18 says, For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. Amen. We need to stand up and defend this truth without any compromise whatsoever. And we need to boldly proclaim the truth to every unbeliever. The Lord is the great redeemer. For the Jews' redemption revolved around the Exodus. Their singing jumped from Genesis, the creation, to Exodus, the redemption, mm. to convey the Lord's love in bringing them out of Egypt. The Lord saved his people from bondage. Through a series of ten plagues, God forced Pharaoh to let his people go. And as devastating as the first nine plagues were, they failed to persuade Egypt's wicked king to do God's will. Mm. Only when God slew the firstborn of every Egyptian family did Pharaoh submit to God's command. And the Lord loved his people so much that he was willing to take this drastic step, step to save them from bondage. Yes. With his mighty hand and outstretched arm of love, the Lord brought his people out from slavery. The Lord saved his people from death. God's striking down of the firstborn of every household, including Pharaoh's, compelled the king to release the Jews. Even so, he quickly changed his mind and led his armies in pursuit of the Israelites. When Pharaoh's forces drew near the Jews at the shores of the Red Sea, the Lord performed an astonishing miracle. He parted the Red Sea and led the people through to the other side. And when the Egyptians pursued them, he caused the mighty walls of water to collapse on them, drowning them in the sea. From that point forward, his miracle would define God's unfailing love for Abraham's descendants. Amen. And the exodus from Egypt is a picture of our salvation from the bondage of this world. And Egypt is a symbol of the world. And the Jews' slavery in Egypt is a picture of our slavery to sin. Mm. And the slaying of the firstborn of every house of Egypt was a dramatic measure that God took to set his people free. However, skeptics have argued that it was unjust and unfair to the innocent people of Egypt. Yet we must never forget that Egypt was the most oppressive, 
savage, and unjust nation imaginable. Mm. A people who brutally enslaved, mistreated, and murdered people at will. They were anything but innocent. They were a people who totally rejected the Lord, the only living and true God. And God and God alone chose the day that his judgment was to fall on the nation. And that day was the day of Passover. Mm. But the major lesson of the Passover points to the sacrifice that God made. In order to redeem humanity, he sacrificed his firstborn son, his only son, yes. so that we could be set free from the bondage of sin. The Lord slayed his son mm -hmm. so that the world might be saved. And the Lord taught the Jews this glorious lesson, that his son would be slain on that awful night. And he instructed each family to slay a lamb and to paint its blood on the doorpost of their houses. And when the Lord saw the blood of the lamb around the doors, he would pass over them as his judgment fell on Egypt. And as we know, the slain lamb pictured the lamb of God who would be slain on Calvary. Yes. And it's his shed blood that redeems us from sin. Amen. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19 says, Knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. The Lord loves us so much that he was willing to take this drastic measure to redeem us. This is why we should praise his holy name, because his love endures forever. Amen. The Lord is the great leader of his people. In addition to redeeming Israel from the bondage of Egypt, God guided the people day and night through the desert into the promised land. And once they crossed over into Canaan, he led them to victory over the inhabitants of the land. The Lord led his people through the dry desert wanderings of this life. After bringing his people out of Egypt, the Lord led them through the wilderness or desert until they reached the promised land. And due to their stubborn disobedience, mm -hmm. their journey was a long 40 years. Yes. But God was always faithful. Every day he guided them by a pillar of cloud and every night he went before them in a pillar of fire. Out of his unfailing love, God never forsook his people. Amen. Even when they lacked faith and rebelled against him, the Lord was faithful to them. And the Lord led his people in conquering the enemies who opposed them, which is a picture of powerful forces. It's a picture of Satan and humanity opposing God's people. And many enemies stood between Israel and the possession of the promised land. Yes. Nevertheless, the Lord led his people in conquering every powerful king who opposed him. Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan, mm. represent all the great kings whom the Lord struck down on his people's behalf. The Lord led his people into the promised land and gave them the land as an inheritance, which is a picture of God's promised peace, security, prosperity, and the blessedness of heaven. Amen. The land belonged to the Lord not to the nations who inhabited it. And out of his faithful love for Israel, God took the land from the idol-worshiping Canaanites mm -hmm. and gave it to his people. And this fruitful land was the inheritance of Israel, the nation that served him. Deuteronomy 4 verse 38 says, driving out from before you nations greater and mightier than you to bring you in, to give you their land as an inheritance as it is this day. As believers, Israel's journey in the wilderness and into the promised land is a picture of our spiritual journey. Mm. We have to wander through the dry, barren desert of this world yes. before we reach the promised land, heaven, our inheritance, and mm. our eternal Amen. home. And Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. As we travel, we can be sure that the Lord will lead us every step of the way. He has given us his word, and he has given us his spirit to guide us. Mm -hmm. From day to day, God directs our paths through his inspired word, and the Bible clearly teaches us the way we should go. Amen. God has listed his commands in the Bible, and he has given us the principles by which we are to live. Through his word, God leads us along the path of righteousness. God has also given us his Holy Spirit who lives in us. 
from the moment we receive Christ as our Savior. And the Holy Spirit helps us to understand God's Word as well as His will for our lives. Through following the leadership of the Holy Spirit, we can overcome the desires of our sinful nature and live in a manner that's wholly pleasing to God. Amen. And as we make our way through the dry and thirsty land of this world, we are never alone because the Lord is with us, always going before us to show us the way. Amen. John 10 verse 4 says, and when he brings us, and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. The Lord will faithfully lead us until we come into his promised peace, security, and prosperity, mm. the blessedness of heaven, yeah. our eternal inheritance. Amen. The Lord is the great liberator. Remember Psalm 136 was written and sung by those who returned to Jerusalem after the Babylonian captivity. The psalmist moved from what the Lord had done for the remnant's ancestors to what he had done for them directly. He had set them free from their enemies, showing himself to be the great liberator. And the Lord remembered his people when they disobeyed and were defeated. When the Lord's people were disobedient to him, he disciplined them by allowing them to be defeated and captured by the Babylonians. And this humiliation was to humble them. Even though the Lord had to discipline his unfaithful people, he didn't forsake them. Amen. In fact, his unfailing love stirred him to remember them in their humiliation. And the Lord set them free from their enemies because his love endures forever. The Lord has demonstrated his faithful love to this generation of Jews by setting them free from their enemies, the Babylonians. And redeemed and freed means to tear away or to break off. And it was used to describe the sinful peoples breaking off their earrings to make the golden calf at Sinai. Mm. It was also used to describe breaking a yoke of oppression, and this is its meaning here. The Lord broke the yoke of bondage off the necks of his people and freed them to return to the promised land, proving that his love endures forever. Amen. And the Lord saves us in order to liberate us from sin. Yes. He immediately rescues us from sin's penalty, eternal death. And he begins his progressive work on setting us free from sin's power over us. Mm -hmm. When we persist in sin, out of his unfailing love for us, the Lord disciplines us because he loves us too much to allow us to hurt ourselves and others by living in disobedience to him. Amen. But even when he disciplines us, he doesn't forsake us. Amen. When Israel was in captivity by Babylon, the Lord remembered his people and comforted them through his word. When his purpose in disciplining his people was complete, he liberated them, he freed them from captivity, and they returned to the land. Romans 6 verse 22 says, But now having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Amen. Likewise, when we respond to God's correction and his purpose for disciplining us is accomplished, he will release us to serve him once again. He will also restore the blessing on our lives. The Lord is the great provider and the Lord's people celebrate his faithfulness to his entire creation by pointing out that he's the great provider. He faithfully makes sure the earth provides enough food for all flesh or for every creature. And all flesh speaks not only of God's people, but also of the people who don't serve him, as well as the animal kingdom. Truly the Lord loves all and is good to all in providing an earth that's so fruitful. The Lord loves all creation and the Lord provides for all creation. In addition, if we have genuinely believed in Jesus Christ, and trusted him as Savior, we have an even greater relationship with him. We are the Lord's sons and daughters, and he is our Father. Yes. And he has instructed us to trust him for our needs and to make his kingdom and his righteousness our first priority. Amen. And when we do, he promises to provide the things we need. He promises to provide food, shelter, and clothing. And the Lord is the God of heaven. He alone is to be given thanks, all because his love endures forever. Psalm 136 closes by declaring that the Lord is the God of heaven. And this particular title was surely special to the remnant that God brought back to the promised land. 
The hard-working Jews who first sang this song declared that the God of heaven alone is to be given thanks. His faithful, unfailing love had brought them home again, and they gratefully proclaimed that this love endures forever. And this name, the God of heaven, reveals the Lord's sovereignty over the earth. Furthermore, it testifies that he will do whatever he must, even move the hearts of pagan kings to accomplish his purpose for his people believers. Amen. Cyrus was king of the world's greatest empire, but he was wise enough to recognize that there was a God in heaven who was greater than he. And this realization led him to release the Jews to equip them to rebuild the temple. When you need God's special love and care, mm -hmm. praise him for who he is, because he's the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. He's love, and his mercy and love endures forever. He's the only living yes. and true God. He's the God of gods and the Lord of lords. He's the God who alone does mighty wonders and miracles all because he loves us. Yeah. He's the great creator who wisely designed and made the universe. He's the great redeemer, the great deliverer, the great liberator, mm. and the great provider. Amen. He's the God of heaven, and he alone is to be given thanks all because his love endures forever. We are living in perilous and uncertain times, mm -hmm. but we can be sure that God is still in heaven and that his purpose will be accomplished. His plan for this earth will come to pass. Amen. Also, his promises for us individually will be accomplished, and we can rest in his promise that he will complete his work he has begun in us. In so doing, he will bring good from evil others intended against us, and he will work everything out that happens in our lives for our good to accomplish his purpose. Amen. We can count on God's unfailing love to preserve us and to present us faultless before him. And every day we should give thanks to God of heaven, to the God of heaven, because his love endures forever. So when you need God's special love and care, praise him for who he is. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you once again for your word all the things that we have to praise you for. As I pray in my own personal prayer, without you we would not know this life. And we are living the life that you have designed for us to have if we will just believe and obey your son Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do in us, for us, and through us. And I praise you each and every day, Father God, for your goodness, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy. And I ask that your will continuously be done in all of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.